Hey everyone, Dolphin Oracle here again today, and we're going to show off some console features of Annex 17. So I'm booting up the virtual box. I was going to use a regular hardware to do it, but my recording device just wouldn't quite work. So first thing you'll see in console environment is very nice colorful boot messages and also a very nice border, a themable border around the perimeter of the console. Most other uh, desktop Linux consoles will just be a big black space very reminiscent of a terminal window inside the window. This just gives you something uh, to look at. Now when you first log in when you first log into your Annex uh, console system if you push the up arrow the Antics Control Center, CLI Control Center is already in the history and you can navigate to the various tools that they have available. I'm going to check out the audio visual menu and see if we can test our speakers. Okay, they are working. I don't know if you can hear them. So as soon as the test is done, let's see if we can crank up the sound. Ah uh, yes, I'm just going to crank everything up because I don't know which one controls here. Okay, and then escape to exit. <clears throat> you can see I do have a little, a little mouse here. I'm not sure the mouse does anything. Nope, not in this app anyway. So, speaker test. Ah, now you can hear it. So now we have workable audio. Well, I mean, Dolphin Oracle, can Dolphin, can you really use audio in a console environment? Well, sure, you got the mock audio player. Let's see, let's see if any of this works. Ah! So I don't know if you can hear it, but I do have music playing. I'm going to assume Vivaldi's Spring from the Four Seasons. Uh, sounds pretty good. So I'm going to quit out of this. Now, interestingly enough, it is still playing. Remember, Linux was born in the multitasking age. <clears throat> so a lot of times, apps will know, will keep doing what you ask them to do until you tell them to stop, which is where this next option comes in handy. That will let you stop the music player from right from this menu without going back into the music player. <clears throat> There's also a console video player. I don't have any video to show on this one. I'm going to skip that for now, but it is here. Uh, you've got a YouTube jukebox, which looks interesting. Let's see what we get. Searching for playlists. Okay. Down here. A lot of times, a lot of people don't realize that a lot of console apps are actually very, very powerful. <clears throat> It's just we're so used to pointing and clicking inside GUI applications that we forget that a lot of features that developers uh, incorporate into their applications can only be accessed through a, uh, a command line type interface. And the console environment here just takes it one step further. Why well, use a graphical X environment if you don't need it? Good question. So let's see. Let's see. We got all kinds of playlists, and it looks like we type in a number to get the playlists. And of course, these will be audio only according to the result. I'm going to hit Q for Q quit. Most of the time, Q quits these apps. You have the Poor Man's Radio Player. Uh, I'm not going to use Poor Man's Radio Player because it's it's very similar to navigating a set of menus to find the music. Well, here we'll try it. What the heck? So let's see. We got uh, let's go with classical music four and classical miles one and let's see. Listen, this program on radionomy. So it's a radio program. So how Q to quit? Backing out of the system here, get back to the main menu, 17, and then 17, the quit. So we keep going out. <clears throat> nice little quote there from Hendrix. Okay. But, okay, so that's fun. So you got different audio player options. But then you also have the CDW. This is a burner application for burning uh, files to a disk. And it can do, uh, it can burn ISOs. It can write all sorts of different per, uh, data files and whatnot to the disk. I actually, this is one of my, when I have to burn something, this is usually how I do it. But one of the nice things that it can do is it can actually create an image of a disk. So as long as you're not a DRM'd disk, this thing can help you uh, back it up onto your hard drive. And I've done that a couple of times with old movies from my, from my uh, father-in-law's house. Just kind of snuck them on there. And uh, uh, these were recordings that he made years ago. And I could put them on a DVD for him from his videotapes. Uh, well, he had a little DVD. I put them on the computer, and they were from his old videotapes. You get the idea. It's a long, convoluted story. At any rate, so I use this app because I happen to have my Antics Life USB with me in my pocket, and that made it life easy. So CDW was a great burner app. I actually probably use it even when I'm using a graphical environment. So back to the main menu. Let's see what else we got in audio visual. Oh, that was where we were at. Sorry about that, guys. 
Uh, internet tools and apps. Now here's where things get a little interesting. So you can use CNE to set up your wired or wireless internet. You do not need Network Manager. You do not need YCD. You can do it from CNE. Uh, I only have a wired because I'm in a virtual box right now, but it does work just fine with uh, wireless. These other items here will do tests uh, for you to see if things are going well. Uh, Curl is kind of cool. It gives you the weather in your area. So if somehow it figures out where I am, that's pretty close, okay. And you can use the uh, the uh, the classic page up, shift page up and shift page down keys to navigate your forecast. Okay, so Q to quit. Okay, so back to internet menus and it also ah we have a text mode web browser and a graphical web browser. Now how in the heck can you have a graphical web browser in a console environment? Well apparently we're going to launch a mouse. Oh, look at this. Now I have a, a mouse in a console environment. And there's some bookmarks here. Okay, that's fine. I'm going to click the Google search one. And I'm going to search for my usual default search when I'm doing these videos. Crackers. And if anyone ever used uh, e-links or links from the old... Uh, old 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 days the interface feels similar you select a field and hit enter and then you can enter text into the field and you can see that yes we can we have okay yay it's a navigable website we're going to define crackers at at uh, at dictionary.com cracker a thin crisp biscuit well okay fine Q quits and also I believe if you hit alt you get a menu I think think let's see yeah alt f you just do and you get a, a, a series of menus across the top here uh, to help you uh, make things work are you gonna watch YouTube on that no um, but it is nice for doing uh, you know if you're in the console environment you need a quick hit on a web browser you can do it uh, the, you got the you got a news reader for doing your news feeds let's see R reloads a news feed so let's reload the BBC here let's see what we get 40 new messages. Uh, looks like we got some AC. Oh, that's too bad. ACDC guitarist Malcolm Young dies at 64. Well, that is a shame. <clears throat> so Q gets you out of that. And then a BitTorrent client. Now, I'm not going to start the BitTorrent client because the BitTorrent client is really hard to get out of while I'm recording. <laughs> uh, but th there is a BitTorrent client here for all your BitTorrent needs. Particularly nice if it's a, if you're making setting up a headless B BitTorrent server. Uh, you know, you could SHH, SHH into this machine just fine and do everything you need to do. It comes ready to go. All right, return to main menu. So let's take a look at system information. You've got HTOP. It's not, you know, a lot of, this is so good that people usually include it as their system monitor in their graphical uh, systems, but it is here for you. Let's see, F10 quits. Uh, INXI gives you the usual uh, system information that Antics likes to see when you're posting hardware problems in the forums. Just so you know, you heard it here. <coughs> All sorts of other information. You get a little memory, a memory tool here for seeing how much memory you're actually using. Now this, this is why you use a console environment. 21.3 megabytes. If you don't need the overhead of the X environment, why put it on there? Seriously. Great for the, like, I'm, I'm going to build a uh, music system out of an e, old EEPC 32-bit laptop. This is going to be perfect for that. Uh, all kinds of information here, various system tools. Let's return here. Let's see, Live System Center. Okay, so we've got Live USB Maker. Yes, the command line version of, of, li of Live USB Maker. In fact, just so you know, Live you the the Live USB Maker is the core tool. The GUI that you get when you when you do it from ISWM or in MX sits on top of this utility, uh, and it has a lot more features when invoked from the command line. Check out the help file and the readmes and the man page on it. It's the really good stuff. You got a tool for making live USBs with using DD. Okay, super. A tool for updating the live kernel. Live. Some of these may look familiar to you because they have graphical versions of these same tools, and in some cases they're exactly the same tool. They just, if there's a graphical, if there's a graphical environment detected, it spits the messages out to a YAT dialog, and if they're not, then they go to the console terminal. And you can configure your uh, the way you operate persistence, and you can also <coughs> make your uh, persistence files. 
if you're doing uh, live with persistence. Uh, let's see, console utilities, yes. So console utilities is pretty cool because it lets you do things like you, you can choose a different splash. So I'm going to see, it tells you the theme at the top is default. And I'm going to change it to something, uh, let's change blue neutral. Okay, that's pretty cool. I'm going to take that. And you can choose, help you choose your font. Now I'm using a default, uh, see it tells me my screen is 123 characters wide. So that's probably using this guy right here pretty close. Uh, if I go fewer columns, I'm going to get bigger text size. Okay. And it does tell me what my font is. You can also choose your font this way by selecting it directly instead of using the console lines. You can do some colors and you can actually lock your consoles. <clears throat> now notice it says consoles, plural. That's right, you can have more than one. So if I hit Control F2, if I hit Control Alt F2, I'm going to go to another console. And if I go Control Alt F1, I'm back to the one I was at. And you can have a different splash theme on each console. Uh, it, so that's an easy way to keep track of where you are when you're in the console environment. Uh, let's see, console, is there anything less than console utilities? That's it for console utilities. Office and other. Now, here's <laughs> this is pretty cool. So you got the Midnight Commander. That's kind of obvious for a console application. I mean, this is one of those file managers that's so good, a lot of people use it in their graphical environments because it's that good. It's that fast once you know how to drive it. Uh, word Grinder is a, is a cute little uh, uh, word processor. This is a word processor. I'm not kidding. So back before graphical Windows type word processors, we used to type in a text environment and then use codes to say if we want the things to be bold or whatever. And this is a, whoops, uh, control C, I want to cancel that. Uh, so this is uh, the same kind of idea. You've got uh, Alt F gives you the file menu. You've got your um, thing. Alt E should give me an edit menu. Yeah. Uh, Alt S, I don't know what that gives me. Styles, okay, so there's where you set bold or whatever. Uh, Alt D is kind of a documents navigation thing. Uh, so there's a lot of different things you can do with this. Now, is this a tool that I would use for composing the great, uh, you know, <coughs> Uh, you know, composing office documents, why not? Probably not. But if you're a writer and you're looking for a, a distraction-free environment, you might really like this because it's just going to be you and your text. And with the console, you got a little flair. And yes, you can use this tool if you're in the regular graphical environment. It, it's, it, I think, it might even actually be in the antics menus now. Uh, but Word Grinder comes by default on all the antics uh, ISOs, uh, except possibly the net one. The net one's really, really thin. So let's see. I'm going to do Alt F. I'm going to exit. Uh, whoops. I don't know what I hit there, but I hit something. Da, 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 da. Exit. <clears throat> uh, do I, are you sure you want to discard them? Yes, I'm sure. Okay. CalCurse is a calendar, and I won't go into the calendar too much, but it is a fully functional calendar. And I believe uh, um, um, Lunduke just did a video on, on CalCurse. I, I, I might be wrong about that, but someone on YouTube has just done a video on CalCurse as the calendar console. This is great if you're sysadmining, you can leave yourself to do notes. Uh, it's a great way to keep your keep yourself organized. Um, you know, if you're not already using your phone, I guess. <clears throat> yes, I want to quit. There we go. And of course, Nano and Vim, the classic text editors uh, for the console environment. And then you got your logout, logout options. You've got this. You got a, log, a, a, a line for the CLI installer. You got a line to reboot. And you got a line to power off. And that's just what's in this system. Now let me go back out to. I skipped one. I do believe system tools. Yeah, system tools. Now system tools. You have various items here. This is for choosing your startup services, and you just choose what run level. Uh, console environments three. Regular graphical environments five. Usually, where you want things to start and stop. TZ data helps you set your date and time. This let, lets you check out some partition stuff. Test disk is for testing and undeleting partitions primarily, but you can do some other things with it. DDMMX is actually a command line tool for installing NVIDIA drivers. They won't do anything for you in a console environment, but if you do boot into a graphical environment, the drivers will be there waiting for you. And then CLI Aptics is the Antics command line <coughs> uh, command line package manager. Um, I guess kind of like apt aptitude, I suppose. Uh, it has more of the it has the same general idea of 
of of of Synaptic where uh, you go through and you mark what packages you want to install, and then at the end you hit the install button and it pulls down everything that you asked for. So I'm doing the update here. It's got some interesting features. It will tell me after the update update. It will actually tell me automatically if there's any updates for me, and I almost guarantee you I will because I'm running the uh, ISO and there's been a lot of updates since since the. Uh, since the ISO originally came out, and I haven't upgraded this particular system. So yeah, upgrade 38 packages. Yeah, I'm, I'll do it later. So ignore these upgrades for now. And now I can take a look at what's special is that you get 83, you get a list of 83 suggested command line packages. Now I'm just going to tell you right now, the six star ones on the base and full packages are already installed. Those are the apps like. Um, Oh, there we go. I just, I just looked past them. So these are the apps like the YouTube Jukebox and the Mock Music Player, HTOP, and uh, an IRC client. And you can see the I in parentheses means they're already installed. Uh, so let me back up. And we'll go to the four-star packages. And now we've got a Mutt email client. we got a frame buffer grabber. Uh, there's a Space Invaders game, uh, some more web graphical uh, web browsers, Gits in here, uh, a tool for doing uh, disk archives, all sorts of things that you might need in your sysadmining life just for your little home server. Three-star packages. I don't really know how these things get rated. Uh, I guess the threes are in here uh, as well. They were lumped together. There must not very many, be very many of them. So that gets you an idea. You can edit your repo source files. You can update the package index, update package index, and you get a quick hit for the kernels if you want to see the kernels. So if I want to install a different kernel, let's say I want to install this 4.13.4 kernel, well, I could just go 13 and say enter, and then it'll tell me that uh, let's see, show more information, mark package. Uh, it is in, it is marked for install, so I can install it. And it tells me it's going to install that package and it's going to say, okay, we're also going to install the Linux headers package. Do you want to install now? No, I'm going to go ahead and quit and back out because I don't want to waste time installing a kernel on a, on a YouTube video. But that is just a glimpse of the power that is waiting behind you in the in the uh, in the console only environment and the tools that Antics has packaged in to make the console environment a special place really unique to the Antix world. For tips, tricks, how-tos, head over to AntixLinux.com or throw up a post at AntixForum.com. This is Dolphin Oracle signing off. Have a great day.